Hello and welcome to this video on what is reliability. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with QuantFish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including structural equation modeling and factor analysis and I also sometimes address topics in measurement and psychometrics including classical test theory and item response theory. If this is something that interests you then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including courses that I offer through QuantFish. In this video, I want to address the pretty basic question of what is reliability? And I want to look at it from the perspective of classical test theory. So let's dive right in and let's see what this concept of reliability is all about. Now, reliability is obviously related to measurement and testing, and it is a concept that we deal with because of the fact that most test scores or questionnaire scores in the social sciences contain random measurement error. So in other words, the scores on tests or questionnaires do not only reflect individuals' true scores, as we say, but they also contain a random measurement error component. And that has to do with the fact that tests and questionnaires and other measurements are not perfectly reliable. So they contain imprecision, measurement imprecision. For example, due to the fact that certain items maybe are not so clearly worded or that the test sheets maybe contain material that is not easily visible to people or maybe the fact that some participants forgot their glasses and they can't really see the questions well or there could be errors involved in entering the data into a database so on the side of the investigators there could be random da data entry errors and so all these kinds of problems that are related to the collection of test scores and questionnaire scores that are due to random influences, random sources of error that add noise to the scores that is unsystematic, that is a problem of unreliability. And so what we want to do with the concept of reliability is we want to find out how reliable the scores are. So we want to quantify this with a single index, a statistical number, a single number that will tell us about the reliability or and or unreliability of the scores, meaning the extent to which the scores are contaminated by a random measurement error. And so in the following, I will explain how that works technically based on classical test theory. So where does this concept come from? What is the theoretical foundation of this concept of reliability in classical test theory? Before we do that, I want to talk about some consequences of unreliability or random measurement error. So obviously one consequence is that the test scores are more or less incorrect. So if we measure, for example, intelligence and individuals were not able to read the test problems and therefore not able to solve them, then that's a source of error. We might then underestimate their true ability. Or if an item is worded in a way that somebody doesn't understand the question well, or it's maybe unclear, then perhaps we will not get the right answer about that person's attitude towards political parties or something like that. So incorrect individual test scores are a consequence of random measurement error. Also, we could end up with biased statistical results. So if we use the test scores or questionnaires or something like that in research, if we do, for example, regression or correlation analysis with the test scores, then that could attenuate correlations. So we might end up with correlation coefficients that are too small or regression coefficients that are too small. Or when we have more complex statistical models, such as, for example, path models or, or other models, then the coefficients could be under or overestimated. So we might end up with problems in our statistical analysis, our research findings may be compromised due to measurement error. And also measurement error can lead to a loss of statistical power. It can lead to incorrect standard errors, so then incorrect confidence intervals, incorrect p-values. So it's really a big problem that often is not fully acknowledged in research when people look at observed variable correlations, for example, or regression coefficients between manifest or observed variables, 
then those are almost guaranteed to be biased because of measurement error. So unless you have a correction for measurement error in your statistical analysis, then a lot of those statistics may be more or less incorrect and may not reflect, so to say, the true nature of the relationships between, between the constructs that you study. Now, classical test theory, or CTT, addresses this problem of unreliability by first of all providing definitions of true score and error. And I have a separate video where I cover the basics of classical test theory in more detail on this channel. I also offer a course on QuantFish where I address classical test theory concepts in great detail. So you can check that out in the description as well. So classical test theory, first of all, provides us with these clear definitions of what a true score variable is and an error variable. And then also it provides definitions, uh, provides a definition of reliability and also provides the tools for estimating reliability based on specific measurement models that I will also briefly address in this presentation here. Furthermore, classical test theory has other tools that it gives us, such as a correction for attenuation, which I have a separate video on, on this channel as well, where you can correct correlation coefficients for the bias due to unreliability once you know the reliability of the score. So that's one approach. And then also there is a method for estimating a standard error of measurement based on the reliability coefficient, which can be used to gauge the extent to which individual scores are uncertain. So the effect of unreliability or measurement error on individual scores can also be studied based on the standard error of measurement, which is another concept of classical test theory. So classical test theory is really a measurement error theory that is focused on this problem of unreliability and how to measure reliability and how to um, also correct for unreliability. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. How does this work in classical test theory? In classical test theory, we have a basic decomposition of test score variables, which are here indicated as YI. I stands for a specific test or measure or item. And the test score variables YI are decomposed into a true score variable tau i and an error variable epsilon i. The true score variable is defined in terms of the intra-individual or hypothetical intra-individual score distribution of test scores. The mean of that distribution is an individual's true score. So if we could test individuals many, many times with the same test with intermediate brainwashing where we assume that there are no memory or learning or other test retest effects, then the average of that intra-individual distribution would give us the true score for a given person. So the mean across a hypothetical infinite number of trials, so to say, with a given test. And that's a hypothetical con construct because we do not do that in practice. So tau i is a latent variable that is not directly measured and is not directly measurable. However, it can be inferred through measurement models, as we will see in a little bit. Epsilon is the error variable. So that's the difference between y and tau. So what remains after we account for the true score variable. And so the epsilon variable is what captures unreliability or measurement error in the observed scores. We can depict that decomposition with a path diagram for, for example, two tests or two measures. So here each test has its own true score variable and its own associated error variable according to the basic decomposition of classical test theory. So each one of these two test score variables, y1 and y2, is broken down into its own true score, tau1, tau2, and epsilon1 and epsilon2. Now, how do we get to reliability in classical test theory? Now that we know how observed scores are broken down into a true score component, so the uh, variable that reflects true differences between individuals in the scores and an error term that reflects random measurement error. 
The reliability definition in classical test theory is based on the additive variance decomposition that follows from the definition of tau and epsilon. Epsilon is a re regression residual with regard to tau and therefore is uncorrelated with tau by definition. So there's not a correlation between epsilon and tau. And so therefore the variance decomposition is additive and the variance of an observed test score variable can be broken down into the variance of tau plus the variance of epsilon. So in other words, there is a reliable variance component in each test score, potentially at least, and there's also a, an unreliable component, variance epsilon. And so those two are independent sources of variance in our test scores. And based on these two independent sources of variance, we can define a coefficient of determination that is the reliability coefficient. It's an R squared type coefficient, which looks at the variance in the true scores over the total variance, where the total variance is defined as above. So the total variance is based on these two components, variance tau and variance epsilon. So in other words, the reliability coefficient is a coefficient of determination, an R squared type coefficient, which can vary between zero and one. Zero means there is no, no true score variance in the observed scores. One means 100% of the variance in the, in the test scores is reliable variance. And so in practice, we find value somewhere in between, hopefully close to one. So typically we would say if we find reliability above 0.9, so meaning more than 90% true score variance in a test score variable, that's good. That's really good. Uh, we're often satisfied with something that is 0.8 or greater. So 80% true score variance, only 20% error variance. So that's about, so say, where we like to be typically in the social sciences. When something goes much lower than 0.8, then we would say, well, there's not such great reliability in the test score. So in other words, the reliability coefficient is a single value measure of unreliability that allows us to summarize in a single number how reliable or how unreliable our test scores are. However, with this formula, we cannot really estimate reliability because we don't have variance tau i in our data. And so how do we get it? We get it through measurement models of classical test theory, which imply certain restrictive assumptions for our observed data. And so one model that we can use that is a very simplistic model, actually the simplest model of classical test theory is the model of strictly tau parallel variables. In that model, we make the assumption that all true score variables are equal. So meaning that different tests measure the same true score or the same common factor, we could say. So in our case with two tests, this would mean tau for the first test is equal to tau for the second test, and so therefore can be replaced by a common true score variable tau. Furthermore, we make the assumption that the variables have equal error variances and that the error, variance, er, error variables, excuse me, for different tests are not correlated. And then we have a model like this, where we have a single factor, with equal factor loadings. So it's a model of confirmatory factor analysis where we have a single factor, equal factor loadings, equal error variances for the epsilon terms and two measurement equations that look like this, y1 equals tau plus epsilon one, y2 equals tau plus epsilon two. And so based on this measurement model, we can then estimate the true score variance. So this model is over identified, even when you have just two tests, it will already be over identified because it estimates only three parameters, it only estimates the variance of the true score variable, as well as the mean of the true score variable and the error variance parameter that is common to the two 
tests. And so these three parameters can be estimated even when you have just two tests, because with two tests, you have already two means, two variances and one covariance. So you have five pieces of information and you estimate only three parameters. Those can all be identified based on those observed means and covariances. And so this model is over identified with two degrees of freedom already. And so then you can estimate the variance of tau, you can estimate the variance of epsilon. And based on that, you can then calculate the reliability coefficient because variance tau is then uh, an estimated parameter of the model and variance y is a function of variance tau plus variance epsilon as we saw on the previous slide. So then this formula can be solved for reliability y. And so this measurement model provides one method of estimating reliability and also testing assumptions about the tests, namely that they are strictly tau parallel. Now, not all tests may be strictly tau parallel. Sometimes the measures may be only essentially parallel, so they may not have the same mean, or they may be only tau equivalent or essentially tau equivalent, or they may be only congeneric. And there are different measurement models of classical test theory that make less restrictive assumptions than this model. I discuss those in a separate video on this channel when I talk about classical test theory measurement models in more detail. But this is to say one way in which you can estimate reliability under this model to um, one estimate of reliability would be given by the correlation of y1 and y2. So under the assumption that the tests are strictly parallel, you can just simply use the parallel test correlation to estimate the reliability of each test. Now, in this case, the reliability would apply to each test separately. So we would get an estimate for Y1 and Y2, and it would be the same because they have the same error variances. So the same reliability coefficient would apply to both tests. Now, if you wanted to use the two tests as a composite, meaning if those are maybe test halves or those are items of a common test, then maybe you would be interested in composite reliability, which is the uh, reliability of the sum of the two tests or the average of the two measures. And that can also be calculated in the case of a strictly tau parallel model, you could estimate composite reliability by using the so called Spearman Brown coefficient or Spearman Brown formula, which allows us to calculate the, the reliability of the aggregate or composite of the two tests. In other measurement models, you would use other composite reliability coefficients such as Cronbach's alpha or McDonald's omega, for example. And I have a separate video on composite reliability as well. So feel free to check that out also. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about reliability and classical test theory. I offer an extensive course on classical test theory with SPSS and M plus on the Quantfish on the Quantfish website. You can find the link to that in the description. There are more videos to be found on this channel on measurement and classical test theory, including reliability in various programs. So check those out. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.